Okay. So the positioning intro. Now, one of the things that's really important, and there's a lot of confusion in the market, is that people talk about branding as if it's positioning and it's not. And one of the ways that I explain it is that positioning is specifically strategy. Strategy and branding is the creative. Branding is the the visual interpretation. So a lot of times, and one of the things that would cause confusion with what I do, they're like, "Oh, you do branding? Can you do my logo? Are you a graphic person?" I was like, "No, that's not what I do. It's completely different, right?" So positioning is a strategy. It's the unsexy stuff that doesn't get enough credit, in my in my opinion, because people don't really understand it and they gloss over it. But one of the best examples that I can give you is imagine that your business is the equivalent of a dream house. Imagine you want to build the most amazing dream house, anything, the sky's the limit, right? You want to build a dream house and you have free reign in terms of how much you can spend, where you want it to be located, what you want it to look like, all of it. The exciting stuff is at the end of it. The exciting stuff happens when people are like, oh, I want to have this furniture and I want to have these walls and I want to have these coverings, etc." Well, I can tell you that in my opinion, the most important part of it is hiring an architect who is going to construct that perfect dream home. In the absence of that, you're, all you have is a house of cards. So that is the equivalent of why positioning is so important. Positioning is the equivalent of that architect that is configuring or putting together those blueprints, okay, so that you can have your dream house. The dream house to being the equivalent of the business, the dream business that you want, that you deserve, okay? And so the reason I I thought about this is because I was, like I mentioned in corporate, and we would do a lot of studies. Anytime there was a new product introduction, we would do lots of conversations around segmentation, around how that product was going to be positioned, right, in the market. I mean, lots of conversations with a lot of very high uh, paid people at all levels, at agencies, brand managers, all kinds of people. And we'd have like these long, extensive conversations around the table about these products, right? And so the idea behind that is that no matter the product, what we were looking at is that moment of truth. And the moment of truth is when somebody, the consumer would be right at the grocery aisle, and they're looking at all the options for, in this case, a cookie. And what is it that would prompt them to reach out and pick one brand over the other? That's the moment of truth. So similarly to that for you, it's the same deal. Is if somebody is looking for the solution you provide, they're going to make a decision based on exposure, based on how you're positioned in their mind, pay, based on what you can bring to the table, et cetera. So the moment of truth applies for entrepreneurs as well. The only thing is, as always, is that nobody's talking about it enough, okay? And so what happens is that is where things get confused. So I had my major epiphany when I was doing this consulting gig a few years back, and I saw that we were having extensive conversations about the launch of a chocolate chip cookie. And I was like, oh my God, th like this is insane. We're talking about a cookie and all these hundreds of thousands of dollars are going into it. And, and the whole epiphany happened, well, if the big brands are doing this, why are we not doing this for ourselves in the entrepreneur space? And that is why I believe that positioning is the difference maker. It is the thing that is going to take you out of that copycat state because there's a lot of copycatting going on in the market where people think they have to look a certain way, their website has to be a certain way, they have to mirror the same kind of look as the popular people. And so they really sacrifice this whole whole idea of standing out. Okay. And so when you think about what is the difference between a Porsche and a Touareg, the chassis, the car, everything is exactly the same, but it's the brand that is built with the positioning of what warrants Porsche to be that much more. Okay. It's positioning. Then it leads to the branding of that. Okay. It's a positioning of that product. I give another example as it pertains to human beings. You can go to your general practitioner for 80 bucks or so for the visit. I went to this celebrity doctor when I was having some health challenges. And as I commented, a friend of mine said, well, he's Gwyneth Paltrow's doctor. And then I was like, well, surely this man is an expert and he knows what he's doing. So let me fly out to Manhattan on Fifth Avenue to go for this appointment and pay $800, 10X the amount, right? It's positioning. That's what warranted me doing that. 
lots of life coaches, health coaches, financial coaches, wealth coaches, all the things, right? And in the coaching space, the average amount of income that a coach is making is under $50,000 a year. And you have Gabrielle Bernstein, who has the same life coach certification, and she's making over $2 million. The last time I saw this, which was, which was about two years ago, so she's probably making more than that. Okay. And what's the difference? It's not about the certifications because to me, that's cost of entry. What's the difference maker is the competitive advantage is that she has positioned herself in a unique light. And that's the difference, right? Is being different, is drawing the thing that makes you different. A lot of times we think, oh, well, I have to be this way or that way. No, you just want to be who you are. And I'll go more into that. So the big opportunity is to position ourselves as the experts and as the go-to solution specifically for those people that we are supposed to attract, okay?